Hey, it's Tim here. And in this video, I'm here to talk about a new exciting feature, which allows you to layer in maps. Yes, that's right. You are now able to add additional layers to a single mapping object inside of Tableau. Let me show you how this works. Um, in a previous video, I actually created a data set inside of Tableau Prep in the browser. And one of the things I'm trying to do with the 2020.4 release is just see how much of it can I do in the browser. And so far, 100% of everything I've been able to do has been in the browser. So let's go ahead and let me show you how to use this feature in the browser. Hey, it's Tim here. Just a quick one before the video. 95% uh, of the people who watch my videos aren't actually subscribed to my channel. And I've got about 7,000 subscribers. They only represent 5%. So join that group you know, join that exclusive group, subscribe, and try and get the subscriber numbers up on my channel. It'd be really, really great for me. Thank you. I'm gonna to go to the default uh, section here. Earlier on in another video in this playlist, I created this prep in the browser file here. So I'm gonna click on that and you're gonna see this data set. This is actually what I'm gonna be using today. What I did is I took a spatial file from the US government website and I joined it onto Superstore Sales to give us the geometry for different states in the US. So we've actually got that as a geometry, even though Tableau has that in the geocoding database, we brought in the geometry specifically. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna create some new workbook in the browser here, and we're gonna show you how this new mapping capability works. So the first thing to do is just to build a basic map. You know how to do this, double click a city and Tableau automatically interprets this as a map and will start plotting the points because it's a city, it plots the points. If I was to remove this and I was to double click a state instead, it would actually draw a uh, same thing again, map, but we can of course change this to, um, let's see, uh, like an actual map with different layers and we can actually color this a little bit. I like to give these maps a little bit of pop, I call it, and um, just make these borders white and um, go back to the uh, map layers um, here and we just want to just want to make sure we wash out the colors a little bit so we don't have sort of the distracting background in there just let that wash out a little bit and you might argue okay this isn't great for for for, for visibility but that's fine I'm just trying to go for something that looks nice I'm going to drag a uh, state onto labels which is great and then what we will probably do is I will drag region onto color just to give us the contrast we need to show you how this works. So there we have a nice map of the states. Again, I'm doing this all in the browser. Now, the cool thing in 2020.4 is I can actually drag in additional mapping context onto this information. So I've already got the states here, okay? And I did this just using the state field. I haven't used my geometry field yet. I'll show you how to do that in a second. Let me go and grab the city and as I click and drag, watch this red circle here, I have this new ability to add a marks layer. Now, if I go ahead and drop this on there, you'll see several things happened. Number one, it plotted the cities on top as a layer on top of the map that we'd already created previously. The reason that happened is because you can see here that city is actually on top in terms of layers, okay? Now, if I wanna change the order of these, I can, of course, drag them around. So if I just grab state and I drag it around, you can see an orange line appears and I can actually put this up there. So it tells you where it's gonna put it. And you can even see here that now the thing that's on the top here is California and everything else is underneath. I'm gonna change that back here just to make it easy to, 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 to sort of see what's going on. And because we've got our cities, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna change the color of my cities just so it's easier to see. I'm gonna make them um, gonna make them red. Um, it's not gonna work nicely with this over here. So maybe let's try and find a shade of um, maybe green. Let's like, so maybe, yeah, maybe that. Oh, it's difficult because everything is everything has a color. So let's just choose black. I think black's quite cool, actually. Let's go with black and we'll just drop the opacity down so it's not too harsh. Now, the thing I want to do now is go back to my state layer, go to color, and I'm just going to wash this out a little bit. So what you can see here is I'm adding context to the map, actually. I'm adding a little bit of variety to the map. And we can keep adding information. We're not done yet. Uh, what I can now do is go get my geometry that I joined inside of Tableau Prep in the browser and bring it in again onto my marks layer. And now I have a spatial layer in here. Now, the spatial layer is sort of defunct because um, it's essentially just showing us something we've already got. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go back to my state layer over here and switch this from a map to a circle. OK, now when we do that, you can see nothing changes. We lose the color because our geometry layer is on the top. So let's take that all the way down to the bottom. OK, 
and go into that geometry layer and let's color this by state so we can get some of that color that we had previously and you can see it's sort of not ideal so let's go back to region and let's do that that way let's just swap that with region and now we get some of that color we had before notice now that we have uh, the state color here and it's also keeping the color uh, that we match to the region because i'm using the color in two different places you see region and state here region and geometry here and so the colors are matching so this actually acts as a really nice way of selecting the states and it's a really sort of nice interactive tool now what you're probably wondering is look how do i disable selections if i've got so many things on the map here how do i make things work a little bit better well the first way is you can obviously change the icon so for the state let's go ahead and change this to a square and you can see that this changes to a square and that works a little bit better we can even increase the size just to give it a bit of contrast and now you can see how that works really really nicely now, the next thing we can do is we can disable the ability to select things on a specific layer. So let's go ahead and say that we can't select this state square. So you can see right now I can select that square. Let's deselect it. Let's go back. And what we need to do is we just need to click on this drop down here for the state. And you can see you get this nice drop down window. It gives you the ability to move it up and down, hide the layer rename the layer, remove the layer, or disable selection, okay? So this allows us to disable the ability to click on this. So you see now I'm clicking through the square to the object behind it, which is actually our geometry layer, okay? So that's a really, really nice feature that you can use there. It's a really nice quality of life improvement. If I go back to my geometry and I go to color, I can actually add that white border back on. So everything has that nice border that we had before. And now this starts to look a little bit more interesting, okay? Now, the interesting thing about this feature is as soon as I saw this feature I thought come on there's got to be more we can do with this right and um, when are we going to get this for charts and visualizations right because of course this is a completely changing the way we've known the marks pane to work we've always known when you do things like a dual axis that you actually get you know two marks panes one for uh, one of the items on the dual axis one for the other sometimes when you add lots of pills on rows and columns you get a whole long list of items here on the left hand side but this is actually allowing us to layer information on top of each other, which gives you a world of possibilities when it comes to labeling and adding context to visualizations, okay? So if you go out to Twitter and you look online, you'll find some absolutely amazing hacks that people are coming up with, just with the mapping capability to show you how it works. I like to keep videos to the book as it were, because you know these are guides for people who are getting new into Tableau or trying to use this at work just to get a problem solved. So I won't be hopping into the hacks, but absolutely go onto Tableau Public, go onto Tableau and Twitter and see what people are coming up with, because I'm telling you it's exciting stuff. When this comes to standard charting, this is gonna be a really, really nice feature to have. But you've seen it there pretty much, a very, very simple feature. We have layers, they're easy to add, they work like you'd expect them to in Tableau. They're very simple to work with. You can drag them around like I'm doing so here. Obviously that changes the hierarchy. And of course you can change the ability whether they're selected or not. And it makes it really, really easy to work with. That's pretty much the feature in a nutshell. If you've enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Uh, hit subscribe, hit the like button. Otherwise, if you haven't, uh, you know, hit the dislike button twice and drop a comment below. Let me know what you'd like to see instead. I'll catch you in the next video. And be sure to check out other videos in this playlist as well. Um, there's lots of great content coming out over the next few days on 2020.4.